Many people itch for success, but very few are willing to scratch for it. One of the main things is we have to educate our men. Not only educate them, sensitize them. The Vagina Monologues has helped the way many people have started thinking. Real greatness comes when you don't realize you're great. Thank you for being here, Mama. No? Thank you. Such Pat. a pleasure. Uh, Ma, you've had a very interesting and a unique journey. So, could you just tell us a little bit about that right from day one or whenever you remember? And there's just one word that I would use for this journey, and that's a roller coaster. It's been a great ride. Uh, I was born into a very, as I told you, middle class, lower middle class Parsi family. And slowly things improved and got better. Yeah. I was studying at the J.B. Pettit High School and then went to St. Xavier's College where I did two degrees, one in microbiology chemistry and one in uh, geology chemistry. Wow. And after that I got married and went to America. I worked as a research assistant at the IUPUI Preventive Dentistry uh, Institute okay. in Indianapolis. And uh, then I came back to Bombay and was just faffing around, not doing much. <laughs> and then in 1986, my son went to America. And uh, when he came back in 88 for a holiday, he brought a script uh, titled uh, Eden Creek. It was about the Great American Depression. And he said, would you like to act in it? And I loved it because that I had always wanted to act. Okay. And somehow that was the beginning of history for me. So as an individual, do you think you had to, you needed to learn a few things or you had to change as a person over time? Was it just experience which made you change or? I think circumstances made me change. Okay. More than anything. Uh, you know, when uh, Eve Ensler always told me that when there is a very negative uh, event in your life or something that is really pushing you down, mm -hmm. there are only two things you should do. One is you can curl up in a corner and die, or you can use that negativity to better yourself, to become a survivor and help others survive. And I think I have followed the second advice that she gave me. We also spoke uh, offline a lot about uh, the impact you've been making to the society. I One hope at so. a time maybe. I hope so. I know, I know so. So I know of uh, <coughs> instances and uh, I follow you on social media, so do you want to talk a little bit about uh, yes. that work, please? Uh, you see, we started doing the vagina monologues. We've done a lot of good plays before that. Yeah. And some of the monologues have always had some kind of a connection with me. Because this first play I told you about, Eden Creek, was also a monologue. Okay. Then I did a play called Shirley Valentine, which is a one and a half hour monologue about a woman who works, who is so bored mm -hmm. that she sits in the kitchen and talks to the wall. And it is a phenomenal play. Even today when I go to Delhi and Calcutta, people say, why don't you bring that play back? Okay. And I want to do it once at least before I die. Okay. The Vagina Monologues has helped in a way where it has really transformed the way many people have started thinking. And then uh, at the same time, there were old men who came and told me, uh, one old man who came and told me, he said, I'm so glad that I'm alive at this point in India's history. And this was in 2000 when he told me this, 2003. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm so happy that I'm alive now to see that a play like this is accepted the way it has been accepted. Uh, we spoke uh, briefly about uh, that why is it always the woman and the lady who, who the guy or the person takes it out on. So, uh, are there instances where you feel that it's always coming back to the woman where if there's anything and it never on the, let's say, the male part, male uh, person no, in the I family? I think one of the main thing is we have to educate our men. Not only educate them, sensitize them. Not only sensitize them, but allow them to grieve when they are young. They want to cry. Don't tell them, oh, you're a sissy. Why are you crying? Boys don't cry. Only girls cry. Don't do that because what happens is, all that pent up grief, that anger, somehow just erupts once they are mm. old enough to assert themselves. Mm. No? And there's so much, uh, you don't know what you don't know. So I think in the corporate world especially, it's, uh, it's 
it may be taboo and therefore the person doesn't really come out and sometimes they just feel lonely in spite of so many of your colleagues you just don't speak up and but you know there is this one lonely. lady who is wonderful comes from a very good family had a, an extremely happy marriage and just the other day she told me she said you know my husband died and now i feel like i am a ship without a rudder so i'm thinking of moving into an old people's home and i said why she says because it's very lonely and she said i don't want to be a burden on my family and uh, i said but you're silly you have a nice house you have people call your friends you know mm -hmm. she says that's what i've started doing i've started doing more things i've started playing bridge and chess mm -hmm. but see these are the things people with money can do what about the person who has nothing correct you know? i totally agree uh, i think so for them i would love to start a small empathy group for them also mm -hmm. somehow sometimes language is a barrier you know yes uh, I don't know if you've heard of you must have heard of Indira Jai Singh she's a very famous yeah. lawyer yes. in the Supreme Court and she had started a small group called Lawyers Collective where all the underprivileged women would come and we would read out the rights to them because even I didn't know what my rights were as a woman okay and I'm hoping that some day a corporate gives enough money to translate these books into many languages in India so that each woman but then many women can't read but they can probably have a small group where somebody can read and explain yes. to them you know their I rights i think the empathy uh, yes uh, it should catch on it should really uh, catch on it's much needed i yeah, think yeah much I'm much sure needed more people can much be, needed so mabano according to you how would you define greatness greatness i think uh, to me <clears throat> i mean very few people are great if you go through history somebody who makes a real difference to the way generations before him has lived or her has lived or generations after him or her are going to live that is greatness i think we use the term greatness very casually you know okay. so and so is a great actor so and so there are very few people who are great in that sense but everyone is great in their own little house everyone's a great mother everyone's a great father hopefully <laughs> everyone should be a great son and a Uh, okay daughter but greatness to me is that and real greatness comes when you don't realize you're great okay humility the humility is the most important thing so what have according to you been the successes you've got and if there were any downfalls or challenges which you've come through uh i won't say there were downfalls and uh, uh troubles in my career i wouldn't say that at all because whatever i've done has been very well accepted by the grace of god and uh, the the downfalls have been in the reaction of other people to my work like the ncpa they have banned the vagina monologues yes. so that is a big uh, all the christian uh, auditoria they don't allow us to perform over there so these are the little things but who cares there are plenty of other people who sure. do allow us and so you move on you don't let that little drawback mar yeah, your success yes. you know and when you talk of success i remember reading a line that many people itch for success but very few are willing to scratch for it so maybe i scratched and scratched <laughs> and in your journey is there a for the upcoming theater actor or a producer for anyone is there a is there a message uh, you have what yes. you should do and not do more importantly the one not do i don't know <laughs> because okay. sometimes the things they should not do are more fun than what they should do <laughs> <laughs> uh. but i always feel i read this one line and i have followed it myself and it says if it is to be it is up to me yes so whatever it if it is to be that i should be a great actor i should work towards that it is mm. up to me to do what i want to be mm. so that is the message i would give people so mahabano i love your facebook post please continue <laughs> doing that the other day somebody told me that i'll be very afraid to be you <laughs> yeah i mean uh, it's entertaining let me put it like that there are a lot of people who entertain us today yes. but i think you entertain us in the right way uh, thank, thank you. you very much for being thank here you. it's a pleasure talking thank to you thank you very much pleasure